In this Shadow of the Earth Tree video, I'm going to be showing you my Blood Lancer build. This is a build that uses one of the new weapons from the DLC, the Sword Lance that you get from defeating Commander Gaius and exchanging his Remembrance and Roundtable Hold. And this is an absolutely fantastic weapon, so let's get into this build. Now this weapon is kind of unique because it's technically a heavy thrusting sword and its R1 attacks are similar to what a heavy thrusting sword would be, but its R2 attacks are the same as the Lance weapon. And what I really love about it is the running R2 attack of this allows you to stack multiple hits on enemies. It allows you to close the distance. And when you hit multiple times, if you have talismans that boot up attack power, that's good. If you're playing a bleed build like we are, you're going to build up bleeding faster. And it allows you to duck under a lot of attacks because you kind of duck down too. So this is really nice. Now this weapon has phenomenal heavy scaling and you can probably play this weapon two ways. You can obviously play it more than that, but I think the best two ways are either to go heavy infusion and stick something like Prag Blade on it and kind of lean into the heavy damage of this weapon, getting lots of damage per attacks. Maybe pairing it with a great shield if you want to turtle a bit, you could because you'd have strength for that. Or going the blood route, which is what I've done here. And the reason why I think blood is such a great infusion for this weapon is because it's the only heavy thrusting sword that has the same bleed buildup on it as a colossal sword. All the other heavy thrusting swords have lower bleed buildup when set to the blood infusion. This one has the same as a colossal sword, so you get a lot of bleed buildup on it. It also still has decent strength scaling when set to the blood infusion, so you can still get decent damage if you split your stats between arcane and strength, allowing you to get blood loss buildup and damage out of it, which is kind of what I've done here. So essentially what I've done with this build is I've set it to the bleed infusion or the blood infusion and I've stuck blood tax on it. And what blood tax does is it allows you to hit repeatedly, allowing you to stack up damage with things like Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, which we're using in this build, or Thorny Cracked here. And it allows you to trigger blood loss very, very easily because you're hitting quickly. And so you're going to get that bleed trigger, which is going to deal a lot of damage. And it also heals you at the same time with each hit, with the last hit healing the most. So you're not only going to heal yourself, but you're going to deal damage. And why that's relevant is because I paired this with the blood sucking crack tier, which increases your damage by 20%, but your health slowly drains over time. So when you're in a boss fight, your health's going to be depleting, but you're able to regain that back with blood tax and kind of offset that, allowing for higher damage without having as much of a problem with that health that you might have if you used it in a different build that couldn't heal itself with its attacks. And this works really well out on the landscape or in boss fights because if you trade damage, particularly out on the landscape, and you are down a bit of health, you can just go up to an enemy and you can use blood tax on them to heal yourself back up or top yourself back up. And if you're using something like the Blessed Blue Dew Talisman to regenerate FP, you can basically keep topping yourself up to max health indefinitely, which is really, really nice and allows for easy exploration out on the landscape. So armor-wise for this build, I'm using Commander Gaius's armor set, and really this is just because of cosplay. I'm using his weapon, we have his armor, it has good poise, it has over 51 poise, allowing you to pull off blood attacks without being interrupted from a lot of attacks, not all attacks, but a lot of them. So that's really nice. You can really use any armor you want that's over 51 poise. You might want to use the white mask in order to take advantage of the amount of blood loss that you do with this build to further increase your attack power if you're min-maxing you probably stick that somewhere in there, but I was going full cosplay here, so I didn't do that. Additionally, Leta's armor is not bad, as this will increase your dash attacks, and when you do the dash R2 with this weapon, which we do quite a bit, that will see increased damage from that, so that's another good armor piece you could use. So if you were, like, min-maxing, you'd probably use that helmet and that chest and then go for some, like, really heavy-duty legs. Probably wouldn't look very good, but it would definitely give you some advantages. So then for talismans, you're going to change your setup really kind of depending on what you're doing. My kind of staple setup for boss fights is Shard of Alexander. This will further boost the damage of blood tax with each hit. You're going to, you know, it's going to increase the damage of each hit that you do with that, which is great. We use that all the time. We also have Lord of Blood's Exaltation. This is kind of obvious in this build. This is going to boost your attack power by 20% when you trigger a blood loss or on yourself or somewhere around you. This is going to constantly be enemies around you. So you're going to get increased attack power when that happens, which is really nice. So those two and Rotten Wing Sword Insignia are kind of the three that I use all the time. Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, of course, gives you more attack power the more you hit an enemy rapidly. This happens all the time with blood attack, so it's a nice addition as well. And another good talisman for boss fights is the two-headed turtle talisman for stamina recovery. Blood tax is a stamina hog, and in boss fights where you can spam it constantly, you're going to want to be able to have the stamina for it. This is not all boss fights, so you might swap this one out depending on what boss you're fighting. 
you can really never have enough stamina, so it's a good one to have. Now, if you're out on the landscape, you don't really have stamina problems, so you might want to replace Two-Headed Turtle Talisman with something like Crusade Insignia in order to give you more attack power when you kill an enemy. So if you're moving from enemy to enemy, you're going to keep your attack power high, which is good. So that's a very good option, though it's not great for boss fights. Now, if you're fighting on horseback, you might change up your setup a little bit. And this weapon excels on horseback, as it says in the description. It hits enemies repeatedly while you're holding the charged heavy attack, while following up by like an upward thrust that does tons of damage and knocks enemies into the air. What I really like about this charged heavy is it tends to interrupt enemies, basically any enemy that you can get on except a major boss or something like that. It's just going to keep hitting them and interrupting them, building up, you know, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, triggering Lord of Blood's Exultation, and then hit them for major damage. And you can just body enemies around when you're on horseback. So if you like playing on horseback, this is a de facto weapon to use. Now, you might consider using the Lance Talisman when playing on horseback. It's very good for further boosting your damage. You might consider using the Axe Talisman when on horseback. I like the setup we have here, but you could easily use either of these on there to further increase damage. And another talisman you can use for this build is the two-handed sword talisman. This one will increase the damage of everything you do but blood tax, basically, except when you're on horseback. It does not boost damage on horseback either, so if you're planning on fighting on horseback, swap out your two-handed sword talisman for a lance talisman or something else. The reason I don't really use it in this build, though, is because I find myself using blood tax all the time, or far more than I'm using my regular attacks and because it heals me and it just triggers blood loss so fast. So you could use that one if you want, if you find yourself doing a lot of regular attacks, but I just don't use it all that often and it doesn't boost blood tax damage. Now, if you're fighting blood immune enemies, there's a few things you can do here. First of all, you're gonna take off Lord of Blood's Exultation because you're not gonna be triggering blood loss. So you're gonna replace that with either two-handed sword talisman or you might replace it with the spear talisman. The spear talisman further increases your counter damage. When you attack an enemy with pierce damage, thrust damage when they're mid-forward attack animation, you do what's called counter damage. If you've ever been run over by Commander Gaius while you were doing an attack, you'll notice how much more damage he deals because that is thrust damage. It's kind of the same principle here. We have a weapon that does pierce or thrust damage. So if you're attacking into an enemy that's attacking forward into you, you're going to get that counter damage and Spear Talisman will further boost that, which is a good replacement for enemies that can't bleed. Now this build is obviously not as good against bleed immune enemies as you might imagine since it's built around bleeding. However, it's still really, really strong in my opinion because you can get the rapid attacks building up Rotten Wing Sword Insignia and that still heals you. So that works out really well and your damage is pretty decent if, with the talismans that we have anyway. And I wouldn't recommend changing to the Occult Infusion for those bosses. You could theoretically do that because our stats are split between Strength and Arcane. And if you were going full Arcane, that would be the best thing to do in that scenario. But because we're going... 50-50, you'd have to respec, and I just don't recommend it for that reason. However, there is another thing you can do. You can actually set this to the poison infusion, and you can trigger poison on enemies that aren't poison immune. This is a good way to get some damage instead of bleed. And you could swap out Lord of Blood's Exultation for Kindred of Rot's Exultation to get damage boost that way if you prefer. Another thing I would recommend adding to this build as well is Exalted Flesh. If you have a bunch of these crafted or can craft a bunch of these, this will boost your physical damage for a little while. This is good for boss fights or for second phases of boss fights. Just give you a little extra damage if you have them. So for attributes for this build, I have 55 Vigor, 25 Mind, 35 Endurance, 46 Strength, 12 Dexterity, 16 Intelligence, 7 Faith, 50 Arcane at level 167. Dexterity only needs to be 11. Intelligence, you don't need any and you don't need any Faith. Those are from being an Astrologer. So disregard those. Vigor's at 55 because you're going to trade damage with this build and Blood Tax's healing is based off max health. So the higher your max health, the more you're going to heal. Probably want to take this up to 60 eventually. Mine is at 25 to give us enough FP to use Blood Tax liberally. You can probably get away with 20 if you're using the Blessed Blue Dew Talisman on the landscape to recover your FP so that you don't have to do this very often. But I find 25 is pretty good. 35 Endurance is there to give us medium equip load and be able to equip all the things we have there. And also, again, Blood Tax is a stamina hog, so the extra stamina from that does not get wasted either. Strength is at 46 and Arcane is at 50 for this build. You want to keep increasing strength if you want damage. Skills much better than Arcane, but I took Arcane up to 50 here. You could probably drop Arcane down to like 40 even and put the other points in strength if you want more damage. But I was trying to make sure that I had enough Blood Loss build up because when you put points in Arcane, you get some damage and blood loss buildup increases, but it's not by a ton. When you take Arcane up to 80, you only get 167, and we have 161 at 50. So you're not gonna get more than six more points. So those points are better spent in strength, and if you wanna keep increasing your damage, you should definitely prioritize strength. 
And you can absolutely use a shield or great shield with this build if you want to have the strength for it. Really the only factor here is equip load. You're wearing a very heavy armor set, so you could drop that down to a lighter armor set and use a great shield for turtling and block counters and stuff like that. But I just find I don't really need it with this build because I play so aggressively. But you absolutely could if you want. So for Flask of Wonders Physique, we obviously have the Blood Sucking Crack tier, as I mentioned earlier. This is going to increase your damage, but drains your HP. This is 20% damage increase, which is nothing to sneeze at, and Blood Tax is going to help offset that, which is really good. Green Burst Crystal tier is also not bad for this build. Stamina recovery can be really important for this build because you just chew through stamina in some boss fights. If you're using the two-headed Turtle Talisman, it's not necessary, but if you're not using the two-headed Turtle Talisman, you might want to consider using the Green Burst Crystal tier here. And another good talisman for this build is, of course, the Thorny Crack tier, which increases your damage with successive hits. This is great for boss fights to give you more damage. You could use that one as well. Or you could use the Wing Crystals here, which will still make you light roll, even with the huge fat armor that you're wearing, which is great. A lot of bosses are made easier by light rolling, so I can recommend that one. Or the Opaline Hard tier for further damage reduction as well. And when it comes to Great Runes, there's a few options for this build. Morgoth is good for maximum health increase because Blood Tax is based off your max health. It's going to allow you to heal more, it'll allow you to take more damage, and you know help prevent you from dying from Blood Sucking Crack tier over a longer period of time, so that's not a bad one to have. Millennia's is also not bad, which will restore health to you if you attack after taking damage. We tend to trade with this build sometimes if you know that you're going to win. So you definitely could get some advantage out of that if you are using a very aggressive playstyle. And then lastly, Redon's is also not bad because it's going to give you health, which is good. It's going to give you FP, which you can use for blood tax, and it's going to give you stamina, which you can also use for blood tax. So those are all really good. Any of those three is workable, and you could mess around them and see which works best for you. So that wraps up my Blood Lancer build. This one was a ton of fun to do. I really love how powerful this build is. It's such a simple build, yet it works really, really effectively. And the Sword Lance is just a really unique weapon, and this is kind of how I figured out how to use it. So I hope you guys enjoy it. As always, if you have other tips or if you have questions about the build, leave them in the comments, and I will try and answer them as soon as I can.